Hello and welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today we are going to jump into a technique video and it is going to be about no line watercoloring, a technique that is often intimidating to many but is actually quite simpler than it looks. So let's start. We're going to start by showing you what you usually need to do this. Uh, you pick a stamp set. This one's a Hero Art one, so I'll put the name down below, um, as well as some inks that are in the lighter tones. Now you can watercolor with either watercolor markers, such as Distress or Arteza, or you can even use your water-based inks, such as Distress Oxide, Distress Inks, with some water and a paintbrush. So very simple, very easy, and you can get beautiful results watercoloring these little figures. I love this because it has a lot of little details that you can color in. And I'll show you some that I actually did previously. And you can see they look very much like they were hand watercolored. So don't let this be intimidating. It was actually quite easy. So let's get into how to do this. So I am using my Stamp Perfect for this. I would recommend something like a Misty Stamp Perfect or Tim Holtz, only because they do a very good light stamping versus I find my other one, my um, We Are Memory Keepers, to be a little too intense. It pushes down too well and it doesn't leave a fine imprint. So I'm going to start by laying down the animals I want in gray. And for that, I'm using London Fog. And I'm just going to lightly tap them because I don't need a heavy coat of this. Because honestly, I'm going to make these lines disappear. So that is why I'm saying do a light hand stamp on it. Don't go too intense. And I would also recommend using different colors. Now you can do everything in gray. You can do everything in desert sand, whatever light colors you want to do. But if you know you're going to change up your colors, Sometimes the inks will still blend th bleed through. And if you're in the same color tone family as what you're going to color them with, you're going to get a better cover up. So as you see, I'm doing the little brown dogs in desert sand. Now I'm coming into the raindrops. For these, I'm going to do in the, I believe it's sky blue or summer sky. And the reason why is that way it easily covers with my blue. And it just takes a little color changing, it's fine. I mean, like I said, you can do it all in one color if you want to. It just may be harder to cover up in certain colors. You see, I use these three colors. And like I said, you're gonna be able to go over these colors with these markers or whatever technique you're gonna use where the blue is gonna be better with the blue. Now, if I put the blue under a gray, it probably wouldn't show or vice versa, but it's better to kind of stay in the same color family, in my opinion. That way it kind of blends better. So there's all my stance pieces on there. And some of them did come out darker than I wanted, but that'll be okay. We'll go over it with our markers. So the first batch I'm gonna show you today is gonna to be using Arteza markers because you do not have to use a watercolor pad for say to do it. You could often even do this with watercolor pencils too. You can color them in and then go after them with the water and blend them together. And like I said, you can also use Distress Oxides or any Distress Inks, any water-based ink pads you have in your paintbrush. And we will show that in a later part of the video. So I'm gonna start by coloring in my little doggy here, my browns. And I'm gonna get my shadows in and everything I need in there. And I'm gonna start with the darkest color and then go in. So I'm getting all his little spots in there. And by shadowing him, you just make your nice little shadows and look like you hand painted it with shadows. The nice thing about doing it with a marker is it's more like coloring. So it's less having watercolor techniques and more coloring techniques but you get that same kind of brush look, which is kind of fun. And there, he's almost done. And there we go, get his little nose in and his little pink tongue. And I'll bring it up closer so you can see. And you see, he's looks like he's hand watercolored. So you see that was not very hard. 
So there are, it can be intimidating. I mean, you look at it and you go, how did they do that? Did they hand watercolor this? How did they do it? How they do it is they put a light color ink underneath and then just color over it. It's the simplest way to simplify it for you guys. And then it just becomes more about shadowing and coloring in and using the colors you want to use to color in your little figures. And it can be really fun because then it makes it look quite different than the basic simple black stamping with color inside. And it actually is more fun and looks more artistic. And now I'm just going and coloring his umbrella. And there we go. This one's done. And as you see, look at that. Doesn't he look almost like he's hand watercolored? So like I said, this is a very simple technique and it is very fun to do. If you can color, you can do this with brush markers. And you don't have to just use Arteza Tombow. Markers work good for this also. Same thing with Zig. Whatever color, watercolor marker you have or brush marker you have, you can do the same technique. The whole thing is you're basically just hiding the lines under your coloring. So, you know, if you don't feel comfortable using a brush and water coloring in things, use a brush marker. Very simple and clean and very easy to do. I mean, you can even put your brush markers on your glass mat or any non porous surface, craft mat, whatever, and use a brush too. Either way. You get richer colors, of course, when you put directly on with the brush marker. So that does give you a little bit more of a richer look. Where if you water it down, it kind of lightens it up. All right, so we're almost done coloring in all our little animals here. And this, of course, is sped up. You can take a sweet time coloring them in if you want, if you want to really get detailed. I'm just trying to do a quick one for you guys so that you guys can see how to do it and how it makes it look. I remember when I first saw someone doing, saw this technique and I went, oh my gosh, that looks very complicated. And then they did it. It was like, wow, that's not as complicated as I thought. Okay, this is not so bad. So basically what you're doing is just covering over the stamp and making it look like it's your own. And you can do this with any stamp, any detail stamp you want to do. It doesn't have to be a small figure. It could be a bigger piece, too. I've seen flowers done in it, and it comes out beautiful. So have fun with it. Find a stamp that you love and play with it. And just practice with your shadowing. And I'm just going in, of course, right now with my light colored grays, just to shadow in my clouds. All right, and we're almost done this one. This is my last color of the gray. And see, done. It wasn't very hard. It was very easy. You're using your stamp lines, of course, as your color lines. Now for this one, I'm going to use my Tim Holtz to show you how to do it on this. And if you see my last video, there was a lot of questions about, well, I'm still seeing it on the market. Yes, stores have the right to sell at the stock they previously bought. It will still be available for a limited time. And like I'm saying, I'm going to use the Tim Holtz and the Stamp Perfect because they do do a lighter imprint better than my Weird Memory Keepers. It tends to go really dark. But like I said, it is still available for a limited time. So if you did not get a Tim Holtz and you wanted one, or you got the big platform and want the mini travel one, I would get it as soon as possible. Or if you want to buy duplicates just so you have extras because you love it so much, I would do it now. Because whether it'll be done here by the end of the year is another story. So definitely if you want this platform, you love it, grab some more, grab extras, whatever you need to do. And there we go. I'm flipping this plate over so I can show you me inking it which is a kind of a nice feature about the detachable platform. So I'm going back in with the London Fog because these are the areas I'm going to color gray. So just like I did with the first one, I'm doing it in 
the color that goes with things. Oops, and sorry for the jiggle. Sometimes I press too hard. All right, and as you see, it got a little faint in some areas and some areas get really dark, but that's okay, I can cover those up. Sometimes these memento inks work fantastic and sometimes they come out very faint. And of course today, now that I want them faint, they're coming out dark. All right, and I believe that's the only one I want in the lighter brown color, desert sand. So I'm just gonna get that little animal drop in there. Go. Sorry, when I lift up my platform lid, it kind of hits my back. I'm so sorry if it's jiggling a lot. Now I'm going to put in the little hearts that come with this kit. This kit is super adorable. It's got it goes with that saying raining cats and dogs. It's one of the re reasons I fell in love with it. It was just so cute. And it's very versatile too. You can do them for baby showers, not use the animals. You could use just the sentiments with the animals. I'm just going to put some raindrops in here. And those I'm going to do, of course, in the lighter blue color. And here we go. All right, so now that we're done this on um, mouse, I'm going to do one more probably little raindrop on the side just to balance this out a little bit. Do one more there, take off the others. And I just got a view of the new Hero Arts kit, which we'll be doing next week. And it is a very fun springy kit too. So kind of getting us in the mood for the season that's supposedly gonna come soon. Here in New Hampshire, I don't see it anytime soon. Feels like I'm in Antarctica right now. All right. So once again, we got this all stamped out. And this time, I'm gonna show you using my Distress inks. And I'm just gonna pick out a bunch of colors in the brownish family, a bunch in the blacks and grays, some pink, and of course some in the blues. So I'm gonna lay them out here so you can see the names that I'm using. If you can see the details of them. And we're just, I'm just going to put them on my glass mat. But any non-porous surface, if you have some acetate left from a stamp, plastic bag, any non-porous surface, or even I had, I used to actually put them in a paper plate, sadly, because it had that coating on it to actually keep it from sogging in. So it kind of worked good for me for a while. You can put these in there and use it like a little watercolor palette. Or if you want to do this with a watercolor palette, you can. You can also do, like I said, with watercolor markers and then blend it in with water so that you get the same effect. Whatever makes you comfortable as you're doing this works. So I got my cup of water here and now I'm just grabbing my brush and we're gonna start coloring in this little piece. So I'm gonna start with a little pink hearts, get them in there, and I'm just getting my brush all settled. I had a piece of it that was sticking out a little weird, but now it's all settled, because this is a very fine detail. And just gonna paint right over the stamped in part of it and give it that look of being hand painted. It does. It gives all the illusion that you hand painted this piece. Though you didn't. In a way you did, but in a way you didn't. You didn't hand paint it on scratch. You just used an outline. Of course, it's no different than if you hand drew something and then painted over it. It's kind of the same kind of concept. You're just using another person's artwork to paint in. So, a very fun little way to make cards with your stamps. 
that's a little different than your traditional way of doing it. I'm just going to go a little bit more with an outline around this raindrop just to give it a little bit more contrast and give it some dimension. That way you can sort of, sort of see that there's a kitty there. And that's one thing with doing it in the traditional watercolor way. It's a little harder to get darker. With the markers, you kind of can put enough in there. If you want to water it down, you can in the areas. But watercolor, you're going to get it light. It's going to be very light. Watercolor is a light technique. It makes your, your inks and pigments almost a translucent versus a more pigmented design. But it is sometimes a little easier in my book to spread. So you can start dark and then go really light and blend in better. And it does actually move a little faster than coloring, I feel, because you can spread it with the water. But there are different skill levels out there, and I do understand that. You guys may not be comfortable with watercolor, but you're comfortable with coloring with Copics and stuff. So the watercolor brush markers would be an easier technique for you versus taking a paintbrush and trying to do it. And vice versa. There are people that are horrible colors, but love the free hand of watercolor. So this is showing you both ways. That way you guys can make up the decision of where you're going to go and how you're going to do it. But shows you the technique and how fun and easy it can be. Like I said, this doesn't have to be intimidating. Don't let card making be intimidating. Just figure out how to do it and have fun with it. Because card making is supposed to be fun. Crafting is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable. You'll find your niche and your nook and where you fit in as you feel more comfortable with your product. It took me years to get comfortable with coloring with Copics and stuff, I still am not 100% comfortable sometimes coloring. But watercolor, I feel super comfortable with. So totally opposite of what some people feel. Darken that up a little bit, just so you see the outline of the puppy ears. And as you see, he's starting to look more and more like a puppy. So I'm going to get his little pink tongue, and then I'm going to dot his eyes a little darker so we see his eyes and his nose. And then go around his ears a little bit. And there we go. Another quick and easy way of doing it. It doesn't look too bad, does it? And you can also just distress oxides if you want a more chalkier finish. All right, so now we have these two white panels and you're going, but they're watercolored on white. I know. So what we're gonna do is we are going to first heat emboss, and this time I'm gonna use our We Are Memory Keepers because I want that crisp stamping. And I'm gonna heat emboss in Recollection Snow Embossing Powder, the, some of the sentiments that came with the kit that go with the little animals raining on everybody. So I'm going to get everything set up, and I'm going to put my first sentiment. I think it is sending showers of fluff, I believe is what it's called. And I'm going to get my anti-static tool, get that on there so that nothing sticks. And this is why I was talking about putting them up against pegs. Sometimes they do move. But if you think you're something you're going to only do one imprint of, then it's not a big deal if it moves a little after. And some stamps will move it. That's why sometimes I do like to use the lines versus the pegs because they're round and it kind of bounces off a little bit. But for this, I'm only going to do one imprint anyway because I don't need it to be dark. I just need the words to imprint on it.
There we go. And now I'm going to heat set this. Okay, they all heat set here and then move it out of our way. Because I'm going to now do our second panel with another sentiment. But we're going to distress this panel. And here I am. I'm going to put it not so much on there. And I'm going to decide where I really want this. I think I'm going to want it more on this side because it's a little bit more open there. And I'm going to put this sentiment right there. Do the same thing, anti static. Put my embossing thing. It's almost time to clean my ink pad again and re ink it. I'm going to do a video on the different types of inks too, so people get to see what, what's out there and what each ink is for and what they can do. Because there's a lot of things you can do with inks that a lot of people don't know about. It's more than just stamping nowadays. All right, so I got that all set on there and heat embossed. And this is where we're going to come in with our distress inks with our distress oxides. And I'm just going to lightly go over with Broken China. The writing first. We're gonna just go around. And I'm gonna try to go lighter over the areas that I watercolored because I don't want it to interfere with it as much. But you can always go lighter by going in and move your sponge around to get more of a finer area. Tipping your sponge a little to get in the smaller areas. And sadly, it is easier to do it after the fact because sometimes you're, like I said, watercolors can be translucent. So what's underneath will show through either way. So yeah, you could do it ahead of time, but you're going to have that issue still too of this. You could also use a cloud stencil and make stencil clouds behind it if you wanted to too. Or you can make your own handmade stencil and make a cloud background also. And I have had previous videos where I did that. I just took my piece of paper, cut it down, made a little cloud stencil with it, and stenciled away. So it is different ways of doing this and very fun. And actually, I don't think I... told you what I put on there. It's like, I am here for you on rainy days. Is what I put on this panel. And the fur, of course, is fur. Isn't that cute? So there's that one. We're going to do the same thing for the other panel, too. We're going to go over it and get it down with the broken china. So in this video, you get to see all three platforms in action. Um, I decided to use them this time only because. Um, as I talked in the other video, I didn't want to use something that isn't readily available to you guys. But I also understand that you guys might have these platforms too. And be interested to see how to do it on there. And I also say that sometimes those two platforms take more of a harder push to make a very heavy imprint. Versus the We Are Memory Keepers that sometimes you can get a perfect imprint in the first try and becomes too dark and you go, oops. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons why I did use them because it does sometimes you can press lighter and get a lighter imprint. And because of the hinge, you can do as little push as you want or as heavy of a push as you want, depending on the ink and technique you're looking for. Versus I find the Precision Press Advance sometimes doesn't take a really huge push to get a really good imprint and that's why I was a little worried that they would come out too dark. And then it's harder to cover with the watercolors. And there we go, we have almost all this covered up where I want it. it looks like a nice rainy scene, little cute little animals falling from the sky. And I also want to spray it down with a little bit of water just to see if I can get some drop of effects. Though I do find that this paper doesn't take to the water as well. I don't know why. 
Maybe it's just the way the ink sits on it. I ran out of my Canson, and I love the Canson, and I have to get some more. But this watercolor paper is a more inexpensive brand that just, I feel sometimes doesn't take the water effect very well. So I'm just going to sponge off what I can of it. I got little tiny specks that sort of shows, but not a lot. Still a cute oil. If you have better watercolor paper and it takes to it better, it's a great way to do it. Now you can even put some raindrops in your enamel dots or in your things. I'll show you that after I assemble the cards because we don't want to do it ahead of time. So I have two card forms that I'm going to use. And I do notice one of them has an ink spot on it. It's just fine because I'm going to end up covering it up with this panel anyway. And as you see on the back side was a goof up that I <laughs> was practicing on earlier and I messed up on. So I reused the other side of the panel and started it again. And that's a good hint too is if you're a starting crafter and you don't have endless supplies of paper and do not want to waste paper and you want to conserve your supplies, just flip it over and reuse it. If the other side is still clean, like in watercolor paper, it is thick enough nobody would see you that you colored on the other side, reuse it. Great way to conserve on your supplies. I still do, and I still have plenty of supplies, but I still do. I like to not, and there's that splot, but watch. Ta-da, no more splot. Sometimes if something happens to your supplies, don't throw it away right away. You can always try to reuse it. And there's that one. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to put a foam panel on the back of it in a corresponding blue. And there is that. Go back over this again. Get this going on there. And then we got this little panel, which we're going to put these little cute little raindrop animals on there. Isn't that fun? Have fun with pattern card forms, too. I mean, it's, if you have some, use them. They're fun. Don't be afraid to mix textures and patterns. It's fun. And there's those. Now, like I said, you can use glossy accents or your enamel lacquer, lacquer pen and go over some of the drops. And I'm going to start with the Hero Arts lacquer pen just to show you. And I want to show you both because, honestly, you may not have the lacquer pen. You might have the glossy accents and vice versa. So whatever pen you have, they do do the same sort of technique. And there you go. Doesn't that look cute? Gives it a little bit of shine on the top. Oh, like I said, I'm going to use the other one. So let me get that started. And I always suggest, before you put it on your card, with anything like this, to prime it first. Because you might get a clog like I'm having right here with this one. And if you push too hard, it may explode all over your card. So I'm going to come plunge it a little bit and get it out. There we go. Sometimes taking a needle to the tip works perfect. That also goes for those enamel dots. The tonic nouveau drops or anything like that too. Prime it first. Enamel dots, enamel things, whatever. Just prime it first because I've had experience with it exploding. And there is that little card. I'm going to leave it blank inside because it's a cute little card. And there you go. Two cute little cards with no line watercoloring. Quite easy to do and fun to make. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please check on the last uploaded video as well as check out a video especially curated just for you. And like always, we welcome you to like, subscribe, and ring for notifications with this icon. And make sure to also check out our website for newsletters as well as join us on Facebook and Instagram.